So today what we're going to be talking about is these new sights from a company called Night Vision Sights. Now this is my first time ever shooting these sights, so I have no idea what the point of aim, point of impact is. But back there on the target, I do have a hostage popper that's next to the head. So we're about 35, 40 feet away. Let's see how these sights perform. I have them on the Grey Ghost Precision slide. Um, it has a match grade barrel and everything with it. So let's see what happens. So far, it's actually not too bad. I actually got two sets, one set for the MMP, one set for the Glocks, and I had some issues with both of them. And we'll talk about that, but let's put a few more rounds at that. I'll zoom you in so you can see the hostage popper. Okay, so there is a little bit of an adjustment period, and that's with any sight system usually. Um, not all, but a lot of the sights, every time I try different sights, I do have to adjust to find my point of aim, point of impact. But as you can see, once I start figuring it out, I start hitting the popper pretty easily. Welcome back, my beautiful PewTubers. Holy cow, guys. Thank you guys so much for everything, guys. I, I know you guys have been sharing a ton of the videos. I've been seeing people sharing them on Reddit and Facebook. Thank you. And if you're new here and you've never seen any of my videos before, well, basically what I do is I get companies to send me products knowing that they're not getting guaranteed a positive review. So if you like reviews where the reviewer doesn't get paid off to say nice things about products, consider hitting a little subscribe button down below. Well, you guys know me, right? Like you, if you've been following in this channel for any length of time, you guys already know that my favorite sites to date are the Trijicon HDs and HDXRs. A lot of people love those sites. However, you know, those sites don't come without the con of the high price tag. And I think they've kind of set the standard for a lot of other companies. It kind of looks like Night Vision popped up out of nowhere, but actually they're not new at all. They're a part of a company called Kaminga. And a lot of us have never heard of Kaminga unless you're in the military because they do the tritium compasses for the military. So tritium and stuff isn't anything new to them, but they kind of looked at the concealed carry market and noticed people wanted certain color front sights and certain types of rear sights. So they said, hey, let's see if we can come up with something that's more affordable. So what they came out with was night vision sights. So I got a set for my M&P 2.0, I got a set for my Glock. In addition to MMP and Glock, they have them for Canic, they have them for some Sig Sours, and they have them for some of the Springfield Armory models. Don't worry guys, I'll put links and stuff to everything that we talk about down in the description below. That way, if you wanna check them out, um, some of the links I will be affiliated with. Some of them I won't, but that's how we get paid here, so thank you guys for all your support. So one thing that I think is really cool about these companies is you can get these in all these different configurations and things like that. However, you know, they're not without their cons. Um, and we'll talk about that coming up here shortly. I did have some issues with them when I first got them and we'll talk about that more, but those issues were mostly my fault. So in a nutshell, they're making concealed carry night sights that are more affordable for the average person, which I think is actually a great idea on their part. But now the question kind of becomes, how will they compete with like Trijicon and XS and all that other stuff that's already out there and already has a reputation. So let's dive up close, let's take a look at these and let's just see what we think of them up close. Let's see how the tritium brightness compares to my other night sights. And then at the end, we'll formulate an opinion. And then at the end, I'll tell you, knowing what I know now, if I would go out and spend my own money on these. So here we got the night vision sights up close and personal, one on my Glock 19 polymer 80 build and one on my Smith and Wesson. And then I also got a couple of sight tools here that I highly recommend. We're also going to be comparing these to some of my other favorite sites that I like. Like I mentioned earlier, night vision really isn't a new company. 
They are just a sister company to Kaminga, which makes tritium compasses for the military. But these sites do have a lot going on with them that is really nice. One, they're affordable. They're all under $100. So that's actually quite nice. And the other cool thing is you can get them in a bunch of different configurations. And there's actually some big differences in the front site in regards to, you know, Trijicons or Ameriglows or pretty much any of the other sites that I've ever tested in the past. Right off the bat, I'm gonna show you the ones on my Glock. That's the site picture right there. You can see that rear sight. You can see the front sight. Let me see if I can shift that focus for you. So there you go. So that's what the sight picture looks like. One thing right off the bat that I can tell you is how low they sit in comparison to the Trijicons. You know, I actually kind of prefer the tallness of the Trijicons, but some people like how low they sit. So, you know, depending on what you prefer, if you like them to sit up high or sit up low, that's something that you would have to make a decision on your own. But we'll talk more about that here in a bit. It has the orange front sight with the tritium in it. And you'll notice this front sight looks a lot different than a lot of the other front sights that we've dealt with. And that's because that's not paint. That is a ballistic polymer injection and that actually surrounds, it actually encapsulates the tritium inside. So it acts as a shock absorber and it's not paint. One thing about them though that you should know is you can't charge them with the sunlight or a flashlight. They don't glow if you charge the front sight. That's the Glock ones. Now let me show you the MMP ones that I have. Now here's the MMPs. These are more like the Trijicon HDs than the others. And the cool thing about these is you can get, you can choose whichever rear sight you want. So they're a little bit taller on the MMP than they are on the Glock, but you can choose whether or not you want to get the U notch or the squared off notch. Personally, I prefer U notches. On the front here, you have like the yellowish green color that you can get on sites. And it's the same thing as the other one. It's got the ballistic polymer injection. So there's that. Now, one thing I will say guys, if you're gonna buy these and you're gonna install them yourself, you're gonna need a good sight pusher for the rear sight. One of the more affordable options that I've found that works like a charm is this NC Star one. Just a FYI, I have a whole nother video about this um, where I installed the sights onto the MMP. It was a mistake on my fault, but basically I didn't fit them. And I actually broke one of the ears off on here. I posted a photo of it being broken onto our Instagram page and literally like NC star, just like immediately within minutes left a comment and said, send us an email. We have a one year warranty on those. So we will get you another block out. And they had me another block in about two days. These things you can be had for less than $50. And I would say that this is the best budget friendly sight pusher that I've ever seen. However, with all that being said, this one is probably my all time favorite. This is gonna be more for the guy who is just building a lot of guns or just always changing sights. This one will work with either Glock or M&P. And then if you wanna use it on different types of guns, they have different attachments available. It is the most expensive one, but dude, like this thing just makes life so much easier. Um, I'll put links below for all of this, but this one is definitely not cheap. Now I want to compare these night vision sights to some of my other favorite sights. Um, we're also going to look at how bright the tritium is in the complete darkness. That way we can all get a feel for it. Right off the bat, here is my Trijicon HD XRs. I'm actually going to change the focus for you so you guys can get a good feel for that. So there you can see that front sight a little bit better. And then we can move it back to the rear sight. That's your sight picture. So there's the Trijicons. Now let me show you the night visions. There's the sight picture there. You, I noticed right off the bat that that rear sight is more narrow than the Trijicons. And then there's the front sight. Move it back to the rear sight. Okay, so that's what the sight picture difference looks like on those. With MMPs, you always have like this rear set screw on the OEM sights. Um, Trijicon retains that set screw. Um, night vision doesn't. So if you over file this site when you're fitting them, you're not gonna have a good time. You'll probably have to buy a new rear sight um, because you won't have this set screw to fall back on in case you over file it. So keep that in mind. Here are the front sights compared. On the left, you know, we have the night visions with their polymer ballistic. The Then we have the Trijicon HD XRs. Now the XRs are a thinner sight uh, front sight post. So to give you just a little bit more of a fair comparison, these are the standard Trijicon HDs on the right. Um, these are not the XRs. And then here are the night visions. 
That way you can get a reference for that. Here's the Glock with its front sight that's orange and then the standard Trijicon HDs and the, to me, it looks like the orange is about the same tint or shade of orange. I do feel like there is more surface area on the Trijicons. However, just from eyeballing it, it looks like the Tritium Vial on the Night Visions is actually a little bit larger. But does that translate to them being brighter? Here they are compared to the XS F8 sights as far as the color of the orange is concerned. So between all these different sights, let's find out which ones are brighter in pitch black. Back up top. So there they were up close. You know, you can tell that although there are a lot of similarities to Trijicons and Ameriglows and the sites that are already out there, but there's also a lot of differences as well. Whereas with other companies, they use like a colored acrylic or some type of paint on the front site. These use what's called a ballistic polymer ring, which creates the color. Um, I think you can get them in white as well, but that ballistic polymer ring acts as a shock absorber to house the tritium vial inside. That way, you know, if you drop them, the tritium won't break and hopefully, you know, if it does break, it doesn't leak out and you grow a third third leg or a third arm. You know, like I showed you, they're not, they don't have photoluminescent paint, so you can't charge them with a flashlight. You know, a lot of people are kind of split on that. Um, me, I kind of like that but at the same time, it's not anything that's necessary. As far as the accuracy is concerned, they are as accurate as I can be. The point of aim, point of impact seems to be pretty good. I didn't have any real issues. I will say, personally, I, I prefer a wider notched rear sight and because it allows more light to come in through the sight, I prefer that. However, not everyone prefers that. For example, with my other sights, I, I can get plenty of light that comes in around that front sight through the rear sights. And I also get a really good sight picture. I kind of feel like these are a little bit tight on that front sight. And that's not a problem if that's something that you prefer. For some reason, it's a little harder for me to shoot as quickly a wider rear sight. I don't really care for the height of these. Um, now these are just personal things. These aren't really cons about the sights. These are just um, what I prefer. So, you know, for example, just comparing them to Old Faithful Trijicons, you can see, you know, how tall they are. And on these, you can see how low profile they are. Now, there are pros and cons to either side of the coin on this one, guys. There's no real right answers, but I prefer the taller um, sights than I do of the ones that are further down on there. I don't know why, but for me, it, the target acquisition is a lot quicker. And my point of aim, point of impact seems to be better on the taller types of sights than they do on the shorter ones. And that's regardless, that's nothing against night vision. Even my Ameriglows that are really short, my um, Ameriglows that are a little taller seem to have better point of aim, point of impact, at least on my guns. On the M&P model, they are a, a little bit taller than they are for Glocks. Um, so I really actually really like the M&P sights. Um, you know, I also have the Trijicon HDs XRs on my other M&P slide, and it is kind of difficult to tell a huge difference. The front sight post is taller on this. Um, the rear U-notch obviously isn't the same. Um, it's a little bit wider on Trijicon. I will say on the backs of the Trijicon, they have a serrated rear sight. And what that does is it acts as an anti-reflector. If sunlight hits it, it's not kind of glaring back at you. Whereas the night vision doesn't have those. All in all, they're not bad sights. I will say this though, you know, in the past two years, I've only ma mainly dealt with about three different types of sights. Um, Trijicons, Ameriglows, and XS sites. It wasn't until I got night visions that I had to actually file down the bottom of the rear sight in order for it to fit into the dovetail. And when I say I had to fit it, I had to grind quite a bit off in order just to get it to slide in without breaking your dovetail or your sight. So I've I've experienced that on MMPs. On MMPs and stuff, that's that's to be expected, right? Like you gotta fit the sights but I've just never had that happen on Glock. I'm not saying that it doesn't occur. I'm just saying in my experience, I've never had to fit sights on a Glock slide. Now, with that being said, if you do wanna get these, I would highly recommend to take them to your local gun store or you know armor and have them install them if filing your sights isn't something that you're comfortable with. If you are comfortable with it, I actually just posted up a video on how to install sights on an M&P and I show you how I file it. That'll work for the Glock dovetail as well. If you want to use that video as a reference, I will put a link right up here for it. Like I said, I'll put some links below where you guys can pick these up and I'll try my best to find some coupon codes for them. Can't make any promises. Considering you can pick these guys up for a little bit under $100, the price isn't bad. Would I pay $97 for them? Yes. 
I would pay $97 for them. Would I pay more? No, I wouldn't pay more. As far as the color of the orange front sight, it is pretty much I, the same exact shade as the Trijicon HDs, um, but it does have a different texture to it because it is ballistic polymer instead of like an injected paint. Now, as far as the brightness is concerned on these sights, I know the Daily Shooter posted up a video not too long ago about these, and he said Tritium was brighter than all of his other um, night sights that he had. Um, for me, that didn't seem to really be the case. You know, I put them in the dark, I put them up against the excess side, the Trijicons and the Night Fissions, and it seemed to be either very close, but my Trijicons just seemed to be a hair brighter, in my opinion. Now, you guys can let me know what you think, which ones were brighter on, you know, down in the comment section below. Let me know which ones do you think looked brighter. I will say, you know, my Trijicons are about a year old. The excess sights aren't that old at all, and the Night Fissions are brand new. But I will say this, you know, if you're budget minded, and you know, Trijicon is just a little bit too expensive for you, I would definitely go pick them up. There's nothing wrong with them. But the downside is if, if you're not familiar with fitting sights, you're gonna have to go pay someone about 30 or $40 to install them. So there goes that price difference between Trijicons, which you don't have to file, you know, versus these. So, you know, it's pros and cons. There's a lot of trade-offs. Accuracy was spot on. Target acquisition for me, like I said, that rear sight was too narrow. That one, I give that about an eight. It could be better in my opinion, but everyone's eyes are different. Overall though, I think they got a good product. I think that they're gonna do big things with the sights and I would definitely put more of these on more of my guns. It's just not my go-to. So let me know if you guys have any questions down in the comments section below, guys. Thank you for smashing that subscribe button. And until next time, you guys stay sexy and I love you.